What do you think of Total Recall? I thought it was a 9 out of 10. This is one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time. There, we, there's, the topics are fighting corporations and espionage. There's fight scenes, fight scenes, fight scenes. And the one-liners. The one-liners just it's crack me up and kill me every time. Excellent premise. This is, it leads to a story that doubles back on itself and turns and twists and makes me wonder, like, what is real? I love these type of movies. And Quato. Quato, what a twist. This like mutant that's inside this guy's body, and that's why you can't find him. And also, like to this day, it's scary. It's super creepy. The the animatronics that gives me the heebie-jeebies. Classic sci-fi fantasy that imagines the possibilities of the future and also the problems that may come with living on Mars. Fantastic movie. I love this movie. That's why we're doing it today. What did you think about today's movie, Total Recall? I also give it a nine out of ten. One of my favorite movies of all time. It's super fun. There's lots of classic moments and one-liners. It's great. Uh, and this movie, I feel like I'm along for the ride. Stuff's happening. I'm moving from location to location. There's twists and turns. I'm on the edge of my seat the whole time. It's awesome. Uh, there's some weird stuff, though. So not perfect. Not a 10 out of 10. Like the flight to Mars from Earth isn't really shown. And the, the woman disguise scene is kind of weird. And uh, the henchmen and police are kind of goofballs the whole time. Which, you know, okay. That's a pro. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, the story, the twists, the turns, the edge of the seat, storytelling, amazing. And the great cast. You know, they just hit on all cylinders when it comes to who they cast in each character. Feels great. So 9 out of 10. Love it. Ready to get today's movie? Let's get into it. Let's do it. Total Recall. Total Recall. All right, so let's start at the beginning of the movie. Let's watch the news. The chairman defended the attack, saying that space-based weapons are our only effective defense against the Southern Bloc's numerical superiority. More so there's the Southern Bloc has a numerical superiority, but it's implied that they have less tech. And the Northern Bloc may be less population, but has better tech. And so they're using space-space weapons against the Southern Bloc. I wonder what the Northern and Southern Bloc are. My first hunch is Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere. Okay. But... Block is really ambiguous. It really could be like Canada versus everyone. I have, I have no idea. That's right. Do you have any guess? <laughs> I mean, it actually makes sense, the hemisphere thing where, you know, I guess that's South America, Sub-Saharan Africa, Australia, maybe India. They're all kind of Southern. Mm. Whereas Europe, Russia, United States, Canada is Northern. And so there's some kind of split in humanity that happened along those lines. No idea. Seems plausible. Cool. War violence last night on Mars. Terrorists demanding independence once again halted the extraction of turbinium. So it's very interesting. The rebels wanted independence. I guess mm. that's independence from Cohagen. I think so. From the corporation. Mm -hmm. ah! Quato claim credit for this latest bombing. Quato attempted to reopen the sealed off pyramid mine. Mars military restored order with minimal use of force. <laughs> <laughs> Minimal use of force. That's right. And it, it's awesome. He's, like, <laughs> he's straight up murdered. He's, he's held up to get shot. That's right. He's captured. He has, he's already captured. You know, it's over. And they just got him down in cold blood. Mm -hmm. It's minimal. I mean, it's minimal. Yeah. Yeah. It was not a gunfight. Mm -hmm. It was a gun assassination. <laughs> and all damage to the strategic facility was repaired. Mars Administrator Vilos Kohagen vowed that troops would be used if necessary. Absolutely not. Mars was colonized by the Northern Bloc at enormous expense. So Mars, the colonization effort was Northern Bloc colonization. Mm. Paid for, tech probably. Mm. But I guess there's probably Southern Bloc people on Mars as well. Causes some Perhaps. friction. Perhaps. Speculating. Maybe Southern Bloc wants access to Mars, but Northern Bloc says, hey, we paid for it. That could be. That could be. Hmm. Hmm. Lots of avenues here for additional stories. Actually, yeah, that could be a reboot on this. Or not a reboot. It could be a sequel based on all this background. That's right. Yeah. This uh, political stuff. Our entire war effort depends on their turbinium. And it's ridiculous to think we're going to give it away just because a bunch of lazy mutants think they own Duh. the planet. That's <laughs> just this overt <laughs> lazy mutants. <laughs> Love it. Tonight on ESPN, the fifth game of the World Sweetheart. Series, live from Tokyo. Duh. The chairman defense. Also, that's really cool that the World Series is from Tokyo. So in the future, the baseball has a worldwide league. That's yeah. cool. That's super plausible. And then championship games are in Tokyo. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Oh. It's Arnold being huge. Yeah. 
I mean, <laughs> if you watch the scene, actually, if you watch the scene, it's all the guys that have jackhammers, and the jackhammer that has this pneumatic like pressure back. Arnold actually just picks it up and slams it into the ground a bunch. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all he needs. Yeah. No pneumatics here, just guns. Just guns. He's so big. Yep. It's ridiculous. I mean, perfect job for a guy like Arnold. Hmm. All right, so the company, the, the business that they go to is called Total Recall, or called Recall, so let's, um, let's watch the business model. Have you always wanted to climb the mountains of Mars, but now you're over the hill? Call Recall for the memory of a lifetime. So Arnold, Arnold <laughs> is on the train and he watches this ad for like, he watches this ad for like 30 seconds and he's immediately like launched into existential dread. He's like, he's like where has my whole life gone? Yeah. And is, is, is he thinking about, oh, there's an avenue for me to have those memories if I go to recall? I mean, yes, that's what he's thinking, right? But he's not like, oh, there's memories. He's like, oh. oh that's right. <laughs> His life is crumbling around him. That's right. Yeah. Oh, man. I get it very interesting. When you go on vacation, you take the plane or take the ship or whatever. You are building memories. So this is hacking vacation. It's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Let's see more about how their business works. Basic Mars package. Now that's for two full weeks of memories, complete in every detail. I mean, two weeks of vacation. That's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if you can't tell the difference, even if you're self-aware that the memories aren't real, but you had a good time to your brain, it's real. Yeah, kind of yeah. awesome. I mean, I had like a memory where I won the World Series. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Who hasn't had that fantasy of like the bottom of the ninth Grand Slam? Like, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, right. I know, and only the players who've lived through it get to have that memory. Well, I want that memory too. too. Yeah, just fun. You know, crack of the bat and the crowd goes wild. Flip! Yep. Okay, let's watch more of the business model. When you travel with Recall, everything is perfect. Nowadays, traveling with Recall is safer than getting on a rocket. So safer than getting on a rocket. Oh, yeah. We need to... Yeah, there it is. Cool. Yeah, so rocket, I mean, they call it shuttle here. And, and so it looks like this exponential curve, mm -hmm. maybe parabolic curve, and Recall is nice and flat. Yeah. So uh, what what happened with shuttles that is so dangerous? I mean, I guess the first thing to remember is this is a marketing graph. So oh, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. happens here, the shuttle is going to look worse. That's right. And we were talking about this maybe. So if this is total fatalities, okay, the growth in the shuttle could just represent the shuttle becoming more popular as time goes on, even ah. if it's getting more safe. So Whereas, you're, you're saying that initially there's very few, few shuttle launches. Like when right. you go to colonize Mars, there's like one mm -hmm. shuttle a year. Right. But as you build up more and more of a base, you need more supplies, you send shuttles faster. So mm -hmm. so the actual probability of, of, of disaster mm -hmm. actually could be a constant probability. You just make more trips. That's right. It could even be, it could be safety could be even be improving. If ah. the the rate of shuttle usage outpaces the safety gains, okay. so okay. this might this is not what you it might not be what you really want to compare. Total what fatalities. you really want to compare is like safety per trip. That's right. Okay. So if they compared safety per memory implant to safety per round trip, would it look so nice? Uh, Hard to know because this is marketing. From recall. <laughs> from recall itself. From recall for recall, and yeah, and you see recall like. Their fatalities is not going to zero. It's mm -hmm. constant. Right. <laughs> so either they're not making improvements or they mm -hmm. are making improvements, but they people die at the same rate. Yeah. And it's it's unclear if this is total fatalities or fatality rate or right. rate per trip. There are no units. There's no units. Never it's trust just, a graph without units. Yeah. And years, it's just how many years is this? You know, they get the time scale for recall could be different than the time scale for the shuttle. <laughs> That's right. It, time, <laughs> years, it could be a fraction of a year. <laughs> That's true. I mean, technically, a fraction of a year is in the unit Still of years. years. So they, they cherry pick you know, like a section of time where the shuttle by random happenstance right. had worsening safety. <laughs> I mean, this guy's a sleazy salesman. What are you going to do? I would buy a vacation. <laughs> I, I would buy a vacation as well. Yeah. Convincing graph. The the business model is really good. Let's watch the next one. 
What is it that is exactly the same about every single vacation you have ever taken? It's always the same old you. We offer you a choice of alternate identities. You can go as a playboy or a famous jock or... Secret agent. Okay. Is there a way for me to be all four? I mean, I think so. Okay, well, how, how would that work? Well, for, I think for obvious first guess was you start out as a sports hero. Okay. 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 And then your sports hero... Uh, invests wisely into industrial stocks okay, or okay. starts his own business. He's already a millionaire because he's a sports hero. And then because he becomes this powerful, celebrity, rich person flocking in those circles, the CIA or some intelligence agency recruits him for spying. Boom. Um, so you're saying Michael Jordan. Sports hero, mm -hmm. industrial tycoon, makes the Jordan and then he becomes mm -hmm. a millionaire playboy. And now that he has got this worldwide celebrity, he can go around and be a secret agent. I mean, is it implausible that the CIA hasn't reached out, uh, has reached out to Michael Jordan for America PR or something? I mean, right, right. While you're over in some other country, like listening to other people, just get some, get some info, get some info. That's right. Remember 20 years ago, Dennis Rodman went to North Korea? That's right. That was so weird. It's still so weird. weird. Maybe he was a secret agent. He could have been a secret agent of the CIA. They're playing some behind the scenes games. You know, yeah. who knows? That's the obvious method, sports hero first. Isn't there another way? I'm thinking industrial tycoon, then millionaire playboy, mm -hmm. then sports hero, secret agent. Well, how do you become, if you're industrial tycoon, aren't you old at that point when you try to become a sports hero? True, but maybe your sports aren't against like young people. Maybe it's against other industrial tycoons. So it could be like uh, Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Industrial tycoon, millionaire playboys, sports hero, secret agent. You know, if, if Elon Musk and uh, Zuckerberg actually do this, they could make a ton of money on pay-per-view. Right. Even though they're not technically in their prime anymore, like athletic-wise. Next step, secret agent. The next step, secret. Well, we called it. We just blew their cover. Well, Zuckerberg and Musk, if they're not secret agents already, I'd be very surprised. I'd be very surprised. Very surprised. Of course, this is a broad definition of secret agent, just somebody on the CIA info network, not necessarily one of these like deep cover people. I don't know how it works. The best cover is plain sight. That's right. <laughs> so we could go as all four. <laughs> all right, let's look at, so, Re so Arnold signs up, or I guess Quaid signs up for oh. recall, and then they pop his memory cap. And then Recall gets scared. Let's watch. God, it's not my fault we hit a memory cap. What the hell is he talking about? I don't know. Hold it down, quiet. Whoa. Yeah. What's going on with the anesthetic here? That, that's a lot of shots real fast. Yeah. So I thought that this is probably some kind of future tech where the anesthetic, you can just like blast the person with anesthesia, they'll go to sleep, there's no risk of death. There's like no way you oh. could OD, because they're very cavalier with how many shots they're giving him. You're saying like like in normal anesthesia, like modern day anesthesia, like you gotta, first of all, it's an art form. It's not like mm -hmm. calculated out. So you have to like watch the patient and see it. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying that this magic anesthesia, you can like inject them and then it tails off. So like even mm -hmm. if you put in more, the effects don't That's get right. any stronger. That's right. Oh, okay. I mean, that would be ideal, right? For an anesthetic that actually puts a person to sleep, but there's no risk of overdose. That would be a technological improvement that reduces recalls fatalities. That's right. Maybe, maybe they just got lucky on this one. Because they, how many shots? Is it? It's like 10 shots. So many shots. To be fair, He's been going oh. that's right. He's a boost. Hang on about Mars. Use your head, you dumb bitch. He has oh, really been oh. there. He's just acting out the secret agent portion of his ego trip. We haven't implanted it yet. So he talks down to her, but she's doing it right. Yeah, she's a specialist. She, she's, yeah, she's level four. Someone has erased his memory. We're talking about the agency. Shut up! <laughs> Cover up any minute. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. So who's the agency? Is that the Earth agency? I don't know. So I thought it was Cohagen, but then why would they call him the agency? They would just call it Cohagen's company. Right. And they're not, these people are on Earth. We're on Earth right now. Yeah. Uh, and they would be more scared of an Earth or I guess Northern or Southern Bloc agency more than far away Mars. I don't know. But don't Mars know. could also have like 
their agency and they send spies over here to do stuff. I don't know. That's right. This this actually is like a wide open avenue for a Total Recall movie. Uh, yeah, another one and sequels and stuff. It's cool. Like explore yeah. Southern Block, Northern Block, Agency, Cohagen, the Rebels, Mutants, all kinds of stuff going on here. It's very cool. Memory that he's got of us or Recall. Ernie, dump him in a cab. Dump him in a cab. Dump him in a cab. So Mars is a secret, and Quaid blabs about it. Let's watch the goons tackle him. Come on, okay, bring him up. Let's go get that drink. What the hell is going on? What the f did I do wrong? You blabbed about Mars. He blabbed about Mars. <laughs> he's, he's in a subway, like yelling, "You blabbed about Mars!" <laughs> and you got like five gun wielding goons running through a subway, yelling, "What?" People are going to be like, what? What are you doing? What is what, that about? What is it? Oh, they're yelling about Mars. Mars. <laughs> you blabbed about Mars. Wait, that guy blabbed about Mars or he blabbed about Mars? Who's blabbing about Mars? What's going they're on here? about Mars. <laughs> <laughs> These goons. Yeah, so in my review, I was talking about how sometimes the goons can be kind of uh, goofy. This is... <laughs> He's not even like, you blabbed about Mars. He's like right. full shouting. Yeah. In the subway, they don't even take a, whisk him away to a safe house or a hotel or something. It's right there in the subway station. Oh, yeah. So, Lori is Quaid's wife, but not actually. She's been hired by Cohagen to be his stand... Her She's a stand-in as his wife, but she has an opportunity to kill him, and she blows it. She's stormtroopers. I mean, look at this. She's firing at Arnold, firing at Quaid coming out of the bathroom, Full element of surprise. He has no idea that his wife is working for Cohagen. Here's a shot. There's a shot. Here's another shot. There's another shot. Full he's in miss. A, he's in a fully lit room. She's in the shadows. His yeah. eyes need to adjust. Full yeah. miss. Full miss. More misses. More misses. More misses. She shot but, everything but him. Yeah. But check out that reload. That's a smooth, fast reload. <laughs> it's a super fast reload. Can't hit a damn thing. Let's watch one more time. Element of surprise. Miss, 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 miss. More misses. 13 shots. Reload. Miss, miss, miss. Miss, 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 miss. <laughs> Arnold hits her with a chair. That's right. Lori the Stormtrooper. So in the car, they have these like video conferences, and they have two monitors. But why? Why? <laughs> why? Why, why, why two monitors? It's super distracting. I don't know why you would have two faces to look at because you'd be yeah, you'd be which, bouncing back, back and forth. Wait, wait, which one? And like imagine that from Cohagen's perspective, like he's looking at one camera, looking at Richter, and his eyes are just bouncing around left and right. Like pay attention, dude. Yeah, he's like cover one screen. Like I can't look at it so I can focus. That's right. Does that mean there's two cameras? I think there's one no. one camera. It's got to be the camera. Yeah, maybe. So that means that that means that Richter is looking over the camera and bouncing back and forth. Yeah, It'd be super weird. Plus, he's in a vehicle, so he's bouncing around a little bit. <laughs> Just weird tech in the future. This is so distracting. This is distracting <laughs> for me, and I'm the one doing it. Oh, yes. Helm. Helm is... He's ballsy. He's ballsy. I want that dead. I wouldn't want a guy like Quaid porking my old lady. You saying she likes it? No, I'm sure she hated every minute of it. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Ard I mean, okay. Quaid is this massive, attractive bodybuilder guy. The beast. And uh, what's what's the other henchman's name? This guy? Uh, no, the other one. The bosser guy? Yeah. Richter. Richter. Richter is not as built as Quaid. He's got so a sick voice, though. He's got an awesome voice, but this guy... He calls it out. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm sure your wife doesn't like... That's right. That's totally what he's saying. He, mm -hmm. She totally... So, oh, to Quaid. Jesus. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yep. Yep. Anything Arnold totally. wants. I mean, he All knows it. All the most it. exotic positions possible. Cohagen knows it. Everybody knows it. Why? Why would? Why would anybody allow their wife, woman, whatever, 
to go into a fake relationship with Quaid. You want a guy like Quaid porking my old lady? You saying she likes it? No, I'm sure she hated every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> the smirk. Love the smirk. Oh yeah, so they're, this is actually, that conversation that just happened is happening while they're chasing Quaid and Quaid gets in, is in a Johnny cab. The Johnny cab explodes. But the question is, why? The fare is 18 credits. Sue me, dickhead. Ever since I was a kid, I was like, why did that happen? Why did the Johnny Cab melt and then go forward and then explode? Is it laced with explosives? What's happening here? Um, the only thing I could do to make this make sense, uh, granted I did this as like a kid, was that the Johnny Cab, I mean, he has a personality. It's not just like Cab, it's like Johnny Cab. He talks to you and stuff. So it's like, maybe it's not just a robot. Maybe it's actually like the memories that have been extracted and put into this Johnny Cab. And so calling him a dickhead is like an emotional trauma thing that he had when he was younger. And so then he's like, oh, he gets all hot and explodes. I mean, good as explanation as any, because what the <laughs> heck? <laughs> Don't talk back to your Johnny Cab. It'll run you down. God damn. Let's watch a uh, suitcase laptop. Howdy, stranger. This is Hauser. If things have gone wrong, I'm talking to myself. Now, whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. You are not you. You are me. No sh all my life, I worked for Mars Intelligence. I did Cohagen's dirty work. But a few weeks ago, I met somebody, a woman, and I learned a few things. So this is actually the truth, because Hauser did work for Mars Intelligence and work for Cohagen, mm -hmm. but he never switched sides. At the end of the movie, we learn that Hauser actually voluntarily got memory implanted for, of Quaid so that he could infiltrate the Mars Rebellion. Mm. And this is part of the ploy. It's like, at first, it's kind of confusing, and then once once on a rewatch, this becomes more evident that this is part of Quaid's quest to infiltrate. Mm. I've been playing for the wrong team. All I can do now is try to make up for it. You see, there's enough shit in here to fuck Cohagen good. And here comes the hard part, old buddy. Now it is all up to you. First, let's get rid of the bug in your head. Take this thing out of the case and stick it up your nose. Don't worry, it's self-guiding. Just shove real hard. When you hear the crunch, you're there. Just pull it out. Be careful. Oh. It's my head, too. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't they put two bugs in him? Like, one in his nose and one in his, like, calf or whatever. Right? Because then when he pulls it out, you could still track him through his calf bug. So I think that actually might be plausible because they want... Richter to continue to follow him, but they want Richter to not be successful in the chase. Oh, so then so, that's so why you need to get rid of this bug. You get rid of this bug, which only this is the only bug that Richter knows about. The second bug, or maybe even multiple bugs, would be for Cohagen to keep situational awareness from Mars. Hmm. Right. Maybe. Which they wouldn't tell Richter about because Richter needs to plausibly attack. He, Quaid. He, he needs to plausibly but incompetently attack Quaid. Quaid. Uh, okay. So this is all part of building, I don't know what you would call it, making it feel real. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe he does have like a bug in his ass right now that he's not aware of. Hmm. I mean, it's actually not a bad spot. You should to put, put that probe in there so you can grab around. <laughs> it's self-guiding. <laughs> I mean, Lori will do it. This is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. Then go to the Hilton and flash that Brubaker ID at the desk. That's all there is to it. He does that. He flashes the Brubaker ID at the desk. Hmm. Hmm. Just uh, do what that's I how they know he's there. That's how he knows there. Uh, he can nail that son of a bitch. F you and me. I'm counting on you, buddy. Don't let me down. Get your ass to Mars. 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 And just in case we didn't know where they were going. They're going to Mars. They've been jammed. <laughs> That's there. Well, let's see. This should be self-explanatory. Here we go. In there. 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 <laughs> there. Like, what are they doing? 
<laughs> oh, this is police training. This is police training. There's no, like, they don't, they, 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 what? There, there, there. That's a relatively small room with maybe 135 degrees of angle to go through. Mm-hmm. Max and in a clear line of sight, clear lines of sight. If you don't see a person, why are you firing? Why are you firing? They're just firing because the guy says there. It's amazing. There. There. <laughs> there. Hey, what? There. What's there? There. Hey, but look at that teamwork. One person shoots, they all shoot. That's right. I mean, they coordinated. And they all fired in the same direction. That's a squad. In fact, Richter didn't even didn't even look when he heard there. He's like, "I'm switching direction. <laughs> <laughs> Just go for it. <laughs> Love it. This is the Mars Federal Colony. Let's look at what's around here. Yeah, so I see. I think this is the landing pad. Okay. I think this is the the shuttle coming in from Earth to Mars. Okay. And it's going to land right here. I think that's okay. what's going on. I think. This this looks like a crane. This or, looks like um, uh, what is it called? Like a oh, one of those. Where you get the rocks with them. It has one of the circle digger things. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's mining equipment, hmm. and then various. What is that ring on the left? That, that looks like a geological formation. Oh, maybe that's an impact crater. Impact crater. Okay. Maybe some kind of volcanism. Okay. Okay. Look at these guys. No safety. No safety. Actually, if they fall. Is that going to be worse than falling on Earth? I think we've decided... So Mars gravity is less. So right. it helps you. It's like one-third one third one, Earth. One-third Earth. But then no atmosphere, which makes the terminal velocity of the fall much, much higher than on Earth. Wait, 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 wait break it down, break it down. So the one-third G means you accelerate slower. Accelerate slower. So slower. You, don't, you don't get up to speed as fast. You like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you fall slower. Mm-hmm. But then you're saying because the atmosphere is significantly thinner, you also don't reach your, your terminal velocity is going to be much faster because there's not as much air resistance to slow you down. That's right. OK, so does that mean that means that there's like a certain range, I don't know, 50 meters or guessing something like that, where like you the fall is not going to be as bad as mm-hmm. that is on Earth. Yep. But then beyond that. Even though you fall, you accelerate slowly, you end up getting to a higher final speed, like higher maximum speed. That's right. So I think the terminal velocity on Earth, depending on your body's orientation, if you're falling, is between like 100 and 200 miles an hour. So essentially on Mars, you're probably falling in a vacuum because the air, it's like 0.6% Earth atmosphere, I think. That's numbers in my head, which means your terminal velocity is probably going to be in the thousands of miles an hour. Good grief. So... I think beyond, you know, Some 100 distance. miles an hour, you're pretty much going to be worse off on Mars. Yeah, interesting. So how high are these guys? I think they look pretty damn high. So the fact that they have no safety equipment on means false sense of security because of the low gravity, maybe. That's right. I guess it makes sense that Kohagen is not so interested in like employee safety. That's right. He doesn't care. Yeah. I mean, he later in the movie, he cuts Wait. off people's air just because. But that's so wrong, though, because like employees... You had to get them here from Earth. Like, you spent so much money on them. I mean, what, what kind of work are they doing? Are they welders? I mean, they're expensive. They look like they're, they're, they're welding or something. This is not easy work. That's right. I mean, maybe they're just pulling in people from the southern block, dying a, dying a dozen. Oh, maybe that's their, their trick. They're like, we'll get you here to Mars and you can live a better life than in mm-hmm. the southern block. But actually, they get you here and do shitty labor. Right, and then you're trapped. Like, you can't get back. That's right. They're like it's some kind of like debt slavery Indentured situation. Servant, something. Yeah, something, something. Man, Coy Higgins are like a bad guy. He's a real bad guy. I like that guy. Yeah. He's mean. Cool, cool stamp. Yeah. Also lazily, not precisely stamped. Just like real life. Just like real life. Yeah. It's all Yeah. Smudged. Smudged. I like collecting those. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. So Arnold Quaid gets to gets to Mars and uh, pretty much the same time as Richter. Let's watch. Welcome to the Mars Federal Colony. Passport. Mr. Hmm? <laughs> Cohagen wants to see you. Okay, okay. So Arnold, dressed up as the la- the red hair lady with the yellow jacket, he's just getting through customs, and then Richter shows up at the same time. 
But like, does that mean that they showed up on the same shuttle? I think I've never noticed this before, but that has to be it. Right. Uh, that if Quaid had arrived like days before, he'd already right. be through customs. That's right. So coincidentally, or maybe not so coincidentally, because the shuttles are fairly infrequent, they arrived at Mars on the same shuttle. Actually, even to the same port of entry. That's right. Mars, it looks like it's a pretty big place. Maybe not as big, definitely not as big as Earth, but there's probably many multiple ports of entry. So they went to the same shuttle that goes to the same place at the same time. I never noticed that before. Crazy. Maybe it's possible they were sitting in the same cabin. I mean, I don't think Richter would sit in coach. I think he would be. He First would be in like, business. He, could it be possible that even Cohagen has like a, an area of the shuttle just for his guys? And so that's where Richter is. That makes sense. And so yeah. they never see each other. There's no kind of like 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 maybe it's like a cargo y area. Like you know how like military people they fly in these big old C one thirties and they're like there's like cargo in the middle and then like jump seats on the side. Yeah. Maybe for Kohagen's staff, he puts them there. Right. Totally like discreet, totally disconnected from the regular yeah. people. So he can move cargo and people between Earth and Mars all secret like. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. But otherwise, like Weird. They, they took the same, same shuttle. They took the same shuttle. Yeah, absolutely. Weird. So the chances of Quaid getting caught are pretty high. Realistic. This was a weird feeling scene as well with the woman in the disguise, and then it comes apart and it explodes. And Super fun. We didn't, we didn't see the shuttle or how they got to Mars. It's kind of it's kind of a surreal time jump almost. <laughs> this is seen in the cafeteria. Mm-hmm. People are. Oh, yeah. The restaurant. People are just eating, having lunch. It's yeah. around. This is very cool. I mean, I think this is the pyramid mine up here. Pyramid mm. mine. So, and it's an awesome view of the pyramid mine. So this yeah. is a pretty nice hotel. Prime location. And it's a little cramped, which would not be luxury on Earth, but this could be high luxury on Mars because stuff is more constrained. That's right. Because everywhere where you can mm. exist is in, underneath the dome. That's right. I noticed here that their fashion is very bland. You know, Martian, Martian fashion is very muted colors. Maybe. Is that just the red tint on everything? So it kind of looks muted. Oh. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's right. I think that's right. So so I used to do a telescope dome and stuff. And if you're under red lights, you pretty much just see everything as red. Like the colors you don't notice. Um, try it out. Try it out if you got like red LEDs at your home. Just turn off all the white lights, go just red. And you can see things, but it's like the, all the colors are muted. Mm-hmm. And Arnold mm-hmm. here... He, Quaid, Quaid here, right. is wearing a green jacket. It looks kind of like a drab green jacket, but maybe in a bright white light, it would look bright green. Oh, and things are red because because the atmosphere, and mm-hmm. so everything looks red. Right. Oh. The red planet. Wow. That's, that's good. So this is in the mutant town. Mutant town, this is George, who holds Quato inside him. Mm-hmm. And in this background, this fan, this fan is like, mm-hmm. I don't know, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, and it's spinning. And mm-hmm. there, there is no safety on this thing at all. That's right. You got kids running around. You got general chaos and commerce and pedestrians. It's and like this spinning fan at head height. It's like it's like waist height for adults. It's head height for kids. That's right. <laughs> kids are running around, accidentally trip. Whoops! Whoops. There goes Johnny's head. Uh, I guess one of them because he's a mutant. So he's still got one head left. He might be okay. Might be okay. Might be okay. Still, some serious classism going on here. Put a yeah, safety grate yeah. on that. A few dollars. Yeah. Uh, they deserve it, though. They're lowly underclass people. They're so lazy. Lazy. lazy Get to mutants. work. Get a job. This movie is a trip. This confused the heck out of me. Uh, even now. <laughs> Let's watch. What? Who are you? Dr. Edgemar from Recall. I'm unarmed. This is going to be very difficult for you to accept. I'm afraid you're not really standing here right now. You could have fooled me. Quite serious. You're- so Cohagen sends in Dr. Edgemar here. And this guy, Dr. Edgemar, has to sell this lie to Quaid at gunpoint. And he's pulling it off flawlessly. Gaslighting before the word gaslighting. That's right. You're strapped into an implant chair at recall, and I'm monitoring you from the psychoprobe console. Get it, I'm dreaming. I've been artificially implanted as an emergency measure. It sounds very believable. And the first time I watched this movie, it was like, what is going on? Because it is wild that he's now, he got he was a construction worker, now he's getting swept up into the secret agent life. 
it's wild. Yeah, it made me question reality. You've suffered a schizoid embolism. What, what is a schizoid embolism? I don't know. Is, is that real? I, I, don't I, know. I, I just assumed it was. From the <laughs> I don't know. And I've been sent in to try to talk you down. We can't snap you out of your fantasy. Your dream started in the middle of the implant procedure. You paid to be a secret agent. Bullshit. What about the girl? Brunette, athletic, sleazy, and demure? Uh, she's real. Like the doc here is making some good points. I'm making some good points. Uh, they're getting some real good points. I dreamt about it before I even went to recall. She's real because you dreamed her. I mean, that is a perfect response to Arnold saying that, or Quaid saying that. I mean, he, the composure, unbelievable. I've dreamed that I had like a Sweetheart, I'm here at recall. I love you. I'd never do anything to hurt you. Bull What's bull Mr. Quaid, that you're having a paranoid episode, or that you're really an invincible secret agent from Mars. You have a beautiful wife that loves you, but you've got to want to return to reality. And the emotional ploy Ooh. of the old life Ooh. that may or may not be real. Ooh. What is real? Swallow this. What is it? It's a symbol of your desire to return to reality. Then it could put its trigger and it won't matter. It won't make the slightest difference to me, Doug. And with no one to guide you out, be stuck in permanent psychosis. Now take the pill and put it in your mouth. The doctor here, at gunpoint, life flashing before his eyes, stays with the lie. Nerves of Swallow it. Almost. And that doesn't mean, I mean, oh, he had him. He, he had Quaid. If it wasn't for the bead of sweat, I mean, he was making sense. I mean, it feels not like reality that he's a secret agent. It did happen at Recall. He had an answer from Melina. His wife is here. He almost had it. Oh. Whew. I don't know what else to say other than that was... Whew. It's very close. Yeah. Almost got it. Let's, uh... Instead, let's listen to a one-liner. <laughs> Fight. Honey, you wouldn't hurt me, would you, sweetheart? Hey. Sweetheart. Consider that a divorce. <laughs> that was your wife. <laughs> what a d Also, Melina, she just got into a fight with a human person who is now dead, and she just like casually like rolls the body off, and it's like, what a. I mean, stone cold. Stone Somebody cold. just died on her. Right. Not a problem. Even if that person was trying to kill you, it's still stone cold. What a bad bitch. Let's watch the, the one-liner one more time. Ready? Doug, honey, you wouldn't hurt me. Would you, sweetheart? Sweetheart. Consider that a divorce. <laughs> Love it. That was your wife? What a bitch. So after this, this is like right after the mind-bending scene with like what's real, what's not, back into shooting. It's a wild ride. I love this movie. <laughs> this is the rebel base. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? So I guess the first thing that come I noticed was uh, these pillars. Okay. I guess is this this is an abandoned part of the Martian mines, and the, okay. the supports are they built a cavern too big, so they had to put in struts st struts for struts. support. Okay. Okay. And it looks like this is an improvised base. Like these look semi permanent. Yeah, they're like they're like not immediately packed up, pack up a bolt. They're not in like in briefcases, but they're also not very fully established. Yeah, maybe they're like half an hour away from leaving. Like, right, like so they're like ready to bug out, but not super fast. That's right. And but, I guess if they had to bug out really fast, they just leave this stuff behind and sure, take critical I mean, stuff. If you gotta yeah. get the people out. So I guess this is how the rebellion stays alive: is being mobile. You know, not operating. setting up a pers per permanent base anywhere. Operating inside of old mines. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. That's clever. Yeah. But their vetting procedures, terrible. Who's this? Ready? Don't worry about me, man. I'm on your side. You're a mutant, huh? All right, let's go. So this is so bad because, okay, first off, everybody loves money. So yep. mutants yep. can also get paid off and work for Cohagen. Yep. Also, it, maybe a mutant makes him more worthy of trust. So you send him to a low-level group for vetting. You don't send him to see Quato himself. Quato, the senior officer of the entire organization. Yeah, absolutely not. 
He goes to low level first. That's right. But listen, they're like, he's a mutant. We're good. Who's this? Don't worry about me, man. I'm on your side. You're a mutant, huh? All right, let's go. All right, let's <laughs> That's go. so easy. What? <laughs> I mean, easy in. You just pay mutants. He's more trusting than Quaid is. That's Quaid's, right. Quaid's yeah. like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> The guy with the gun's like, let's go. That's right. Got a weird hand? Let's do it. Let's do it. Meet my boss. Send it. Not just not just his boss, like the, the boss. boss of the entire rebellion. That's right. So <laughs> the northern block that built the Mars Federal Colony, amazing engineering. Let's watch this. Now put your fucking hands in the air. Oh. Mean. Okay, Benny. No look, no look turn. Frictionless. Wait. No friction. What a good door. Yeah, I'd never noticed this before, but now unreal. He doesn't, One, he doesn't lean into it. He doesn't yank it. Just a little twist and a little pull. Smooth right. door. There's no, you know, nothing no to jerking. get started. You know, it's not a, it's, it's, it's no heavy, grinding. so you don't need to pull it against friction. No, none of that. It's just smooth a smooth butter. Side. Let's watch again from about here. Smooth. And he doesn't. He does it with his human hand, so which I assume is his weaker hand. Mm -hmm. So like even his human hand. Mm. Mm. This looks like a heavy door, and it looks like it wasn't built recently. That's right. That means this thing has had heavy a heavy door on its hinges, torquing it down for a long period of time, and the hinges have stayed buttery smooth the entire time. The northern block, goddamn. If I had to choose, I'd want to be on the northern block. That's right. On the block. I mean, they have the space weapons. That's right. <laughs> Let's listen to Cohagen's dastardly plan at the end. Well, my boy, you're a hero. F you. Don't be modest. <laughs> Resistance has been completely wiped out, and you were the key to the whole thing. You two faced bastard. He's innocent. None of my people could get close to Quato. Mutants could always sniff us out. So Hauser and I sat down and invented you. I mean, that makes a lot of sense because the mutants are known to be telepaths. So the only way to beat a telepath is to truly believe you're a part of the rebellion hmm. as a sleeper agent. I, I never put that together. <laughs> <laughs> Hauser turned against you. The fact is, Hauser volunteered to become Doug Quaid. Hauser. It was the only way to fool the psychics. This idiot here has been trying to kill me. He wasn't in on it. You set him off by going to recall. I mean, as brilliant. You have an agent trying to kill Quaid, who's incompetent, who won't get the job done, but adds plausibility to the whole storyline. Awesome. That's right, because he's trying his best. And as far as Quaid can tell, he actually is trying his best. Mm -hmm. If you had an agent that was like feigning it, mm -hmm. Quaid may figure it out. In fact, I just thought of this right now. They put Richter into super anger mode. Because they have Lori, f Quaid, who is more of a man. That's right. She gets railed by him, which pushes him into a rage. Right, which makes him make terrible decisions. That's right. Which diminishes the chances that he'll kill Quaid. Mm. Quaigan. Quaigan. Northern Block. So Quaigan. why am I still alive? We gave you lots of help. Benny here. Guy with the suitcase. The money. The mask. So Benny wasn't a coincidence. The guy with the mask. So, so the mask they gave him to disguise himself as the old lady, not a coincidence. The suitcase and the guy who gave him the suitcase via the payphone, not a coincidence. Great plan. This is mastermind stuff. Too perfect. Perfect my ass. <laughs> you pop your memory cap before we can activate you? Richter goes hog wild. I'm amazed it worked. Howdy, Quaid. Quato is dead and you have led us to him. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down. Sorry for that I've put you through. It's my body I've got there, and I want it back. So, adios, amigo, and thanks for not getting yourself killed. Maybe we meet now at dreams. <laughs> you never know. Hauser's such an asshole. He's such an asshole that he put himself in the video and be like, hey, Quaid's gonna get livid at this later. <laughs> Let's fuck with Quaid. Let's fuck, fuck with, with Quaid. <laughs> he took the time out of his day to be in the video. <laughs> yeah. We know Kohagen's an evil bastard, but Hauser, goddamn. <laughs> What a master plan. Clever. People need air. The oxygen level is bottoming out in Sector G. Fuck him. Come on, Cohagen, you got what you want. Give these people air. He's such an asset, he won't give people air. He won't give them air. I mean, 
He's such an such evil nice. person. He could just give them air problem over. Mm. Fuck him. Fuck him. Such a classic scene, though. The oxygen level is bottoming out in Sector G. Fuck him. Fuck him. Come on, Cohagen. You got what you want. Give these people air. <laughs> <laughs> give these people air. Give these people air. And then, well, Quaid's strength. Or is it improper installation of the arm hold? Hmm? If you don't keep still, you'll end up psychotic. Okay, so that rod is not threaded. It's not screwed in. He broke a weld. Right. Wait, did he? He just ripped the material. I think he just ripped the material. So that's a, that's a metal rod and it has the ducting on it. Yep. Which so means he, he stretched the metal apart. He, so this is maybe a steel rod. Maybe steel, but it's metal. I mean, Laurie must have had a great time. No wonder Richter was pissed off. Right. I mean, okay. A human pulling against a, what is that? Maybe a quarter oh, inch metal rod? Yeah. The the tensile strength of a metal rod like that. Quarter is, inch? No, this is a full inch. Full inch? Yeah. Look at the size of his fist. Yeah. Okay. Full inch. He ripped that metal apart. The tensile strength of, of any metal is far beyond the strength of and, a person. And we know that the Northern Block has good materials. That's good right. Construction. That's right. But they didn't take into account. Quaid works out. Quaid works out. Takes that tremble on. <laughs> I mean, there's no other explanation. It's absurd. And then the stab. Ooh, it's crunch. Oh, God. This, this like, worker, he's like, okay. I'm dead. That's right. <laughs> I've never wanted to be a science guy less. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so take a look at the, the pyramid mine, which is actually, what, an alien a atmosphere AL creation factory. device? Yeah. So it looks like we've got these heaters at the top here. Hmm. And then this looks like human construction. I think so, yeah. And then this is a mine for turbidium, I guess. Turbidium. Yeah. It's like a, like turbidian salt flat looking thing. Looking and then the mine is exactly actually where your mouse is. Yeah, right Point here. It, that's the mine. And then there's a more zoomed in pick over here. We can see sort of this mine infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then looks like more infrastructure that they're they're it's pulling like, material up out of here. I guess they scouted the control room and then they built that catwalk there. Yeah. And this might be the good stuff. So yeah. we they said if they turn on the device in the pyramid mine, all the turbidium goes away. So this must be the good stuff. Oh, here's an even more zoomed in picture. Mm -hmm. This is the mine. So then they like chose a spot and then started digging down. Yeah. And this is like the infrastructure to get the turbidium out. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. And then this is where we're sort of zooming out through the heating rods. We like came up above that hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is another view of the human infrastructure. This may be a conveyor mm. and then more of the heating rods. And this mm. is the, the salt flats mm. of the turbidium. We were saying that they l remind us of control rods. Control rods in a nuclear reactor, yeah. you like insert them to slow down the reaction. Mm -hmm. But here, it's the opposite. Here, you insert the rods to start the reaction. That's right. And so maybe they're like catalytic. Like, like if it's just heaters, then you get a localized heating. Maybe they're like catalytic somehow. So once mm -hmm. you inject it in, then the run the process becomes runaway and right. faster, yeah. faster, faster. Which makes sense. It's designed that way because that's what it's designed to do is to start the atmospheric process. Mm -hmm. So it better be some kind of runaway until all of it is evaporated. Mm. Very cool. Very clever aliens. And I guess these are like power couplers or something. Because we're so. like above the heating rods at this point, I think. Right, right. And here's another view. This reminds me a lot of Sharenkov radiation mm -hmm. inside of nuclear reactors. Yeah. Maybe maybe there is some kind of nuclear component to this because we don't really know how this works. That's right. Maybe these things are spun up all the time with like a mild nuclear reaction. Mm -hmm. And then when you drop the heater rods in, then, then the chain reaction is down there. Run away. Yeah, maybe, very maybe. cool. I don't know. And then the ultimate control room. Yeah. The alien fingers. I mean, talk about easy to understand how to turn this thing on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just boop. Me. <laughs> also, it didn't need, it looks like it requires an alien hand. Right. But when Arnold turns it on, he just sort of fits his hand in there. Oh, he just does one of these guys. Yeah. But I was thinking about it, like, what a weird alien hand where, like, there's, like, a ridge in the middle that's actually very suited for having two fingers like this. Oh, yeah. Maybe the alien hand does have five fingers, but this is like their like 
corporate symbol <laughs> or something. Oh, it could be, yeah. yeah. Oh, we could have two fingers, or maybe they just have one big finger. With a ridge in the middle? I mean, it could be evolved. Oh, good point. Right. Good so point. For, for whatever survival reason, where when they evolved on Mars, or maybe somewhere else, the, the two fingers fused into one. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And, okay, classic scene. Classic scene. What is it? The um, Quaid and Melina fly out of the pyramid, and the pressure is so low that they're about to die. The pyramid mine is activated and starts shooting gas out. It looks kind of uncontrolled, but I'm not sure it is. I think it's uh, run away. Yeah, here's the heating rods. Yep, dipping down into that turbidium surface, yeah. converting it to air somehow. Yep. And then here's the atmosphere pumping out of the pyramid yeah. mine. So I so Melina and Quaid are somewhere on one of these. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. here. Yeah. So they're at like zero atmosphere essentially when they hit the, the sand and they start to die. So they probably have like 60 seconds, maybe 90 seconds before they're toast. And I guess what's some minimum pressure they would need to get up to to survive? Maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of an atmosphere? I, I guess. Something like that. So somehow there needs to be a localized bubble around the pyramid mine that sits above 0 0.2, 0 0.3 atmosphere so they can survive. Why, why localized? Why not just the whole planet? Well, doesn't it seem unrealistic that this thing could pump the whole planet oh, up to 0. 0.2? I see what you're saying. So it would be like a localized bubble of high pressure that slowly spreads oh, around. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. So so, so ideally, like the whole planet is covered with an even atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But but in the short term, you could have enough atmosphere nearby the, the opening for Melina and for Quaid to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. At first glance, I thought there's no way this is like scientifically possible because mm -hmm. the pressure would never get high enough uh, when they're outside for them not to die. But the physics is complicated here. Maybe there is could be that localized bubble. Hmm. Like like right. like it's like the air is spreading out over time. And so mm -hmm. the other side of Mars is too far away. It's not yet to have right. an atmosphere. But where they are, there's enough. There's enough, yeah. Okay. What about the winds though? Wouldn't there be a lot of wind? That's a good point. So so if there's no atmosphere and then suddenly a lot of atmosphere, like like no atmosphere, mm -hmm. then suddenly suddenly a lot of atmosphere, mm -hmm. it's gonna cause a huge rush of winds. It's gonna mm -hmm. pick up all that dust so and all that sand. Maybe the fact that they got stuck in the control room. Uh -huh. There was an the oh! shockwave already passed, then they flew out. So the pressure was already building when they were when they got out. Right. My my concern about that wind is that it's going to pick up a bunch of Martian sand, Martian dust, Martian little bits mm -hmm. of rocks, and because there's very little erosion mm -hmm. on Mars, those things are like those granules, are little sharp, sharp things. So so you're saying that because they held on for as long as they could, when that first gust of wind blew away all that sand, they actually landed on a pretty smooth surface, yeah, like yeah. not sharp. And that explains why the windows shattered at the at the colony because. Normally, wind hitting it probably wouldn't do it, but wind with the little shattery pieces. Yeah, yeah. It, Basically, ninja rocks. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I see. Very cool. So my physicist brain at first was like, no way, no way. No way. No. But now I'm like, uh, possible, maybe. Possible. I'm. This is a lot of complicated gas dynamics going on here, plus mm. the sand, mm. plus these like, mm. how does that work on a planetary scale? Mm. I, it might be possible. My... Concern though is is my understanding is that the reason Mars doesn't have an atmosphere like Earth or Venus mm -hmm. is that it's just not big enough. There's just not enough mass, so it doesn't hold on to an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I thought about that as well. And I think what on geologic timescales, Mars, if you put a one atmosphere atmospheric pressure on Mars, on geologic timescales, it's gonna get whittled away by the lack of mass and lack of magnetic field on geologic Mars. Geologic timescales you're talking about like billions of years? Probably Hundred thousand years, maybe. Okay. okay. So if if the, if you put a Earth-like atmosphere on Mars and ten thousand years later it's at eighty percent, for that's, us that's totally fine. I guess it's we still just, good. Yeah. We just need a small amount of replenishment every year, mm. and we would stick at one atmosphere. Mm. So maybe when this atmosphere is implanted onto implanted, sent onto Mars, it will last ten thousand years. It's good enough for me. But good enough for civilization. So. Yeah. Even though Mars can't hold on to an atmosphere, the time scales, it's actually unknown, hmm. I think, maybe. Hmm. Good point. Okay. 
So the scene, totally legit. Yeah, totally legit. We declared it legit, therefore legit. There it is. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's our uh, discussion of Total Recall. <laughs> yep. Awesome movie. Super fun. Yeah. I'm. Ha I think we've just blew open the, a plot line where we could have a Total Recall yeah. follow up. Yeah. There's a lot of video games on Mars that sort of inspired by Total Recall, mm. but it feels like there needs to be some follow up movies. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. Southern Block, Northern Block, Mars, The Mutants. What happens now? That's right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, now that now that Cohagen's dead, who takes over the company? That's right. And now that there's a full atmosphere on Mars, the power dynamic between the company and the mutants has changed. And the northern block and the southern block. That's right. Maybe Mars becomes more independent. Maybe mm -hmm. that means the southern block can try to take over. Mm -hmm. Whoo, lots of storylines. Who's the agency? Who is the agency? That's right. Whew, so many storylines. Plus, oh, you got all the memory back. stuff. That's right. We, we need these need to get made. All right. Check us next time. We're doing uh, Alien. Alien.